Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So glad to see everybody here tonight. Friday night service at Family Life Center Apostolic Church. This is what King David said. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. For in the house of the Lord, they will be dancing, they will be rejoicing. Praise the name of the living God. God is good. And for those of you that are honorable guests, welcome to Family Life Center, Apostolic Church. Here at Family Life Center, Apostolic Church, as our pastor, who say the water tastes a little sweeter over here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. But before we get into the message tonight, we have one of our beloved sisters and a team and they're going to bless us. A beautiful song. And so I turn this over to Sister Lily Romero, a wonderful sister that God is using to bless God's people. And so Sister Lily, come on. You are welcome in this place, welcome in our hearts, come and have your way. God, meet us face to face, all consuming fire, move without restraint. On us, Spirit, come. You're our heart's desire. Breathe on us, Spirit, come. You're our heart's desire. We stand in the glory of the King, knowing that you're here, you have set us free. You're here, let our worship be your throne, amazed by who you are, your presence makes us whole. Desire. 
just want you. We just want your presence, Jesus. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move. All our faith and hope in our great God. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move. All our faith and hope in our great God. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move. All our faith and hope in our great God. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move. All our faith and hope in our great God. No heaven locked up, let it open. No kingdom stands still, let it move. Our faith, our trust, our hope, our great God, our great God. No heaven locked up, let it open. No kingdom stands still, let it move. Our faith, our trust, our hope, our great God, our great God. No heaven locked up, let it open. No kingdom stands still, let it move. Our faith, our trust, our hope, and our great God, our great God. No heaven locked up, let it open. No kingdom stands still, let it move. Our faith, our trust, our hope, and our great God, our great Let your kingdom 
beautiful song. Praise the name of the living God. May the heavens open. Praise God. What a wonderful song. Have your way. That's all we can say. Have your way, Lord, in the times that we live in. Praise the name of the living God. May the Lord bless Sister Lily Romero and the praise team for the awesome job. God is using them for his honor and glory. Praise the name of the living God. How many are here? How many are hungry to hear that says the Lord? Praise the name of the living God. Every Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble ourselves together, Father. We have worshipped you. We have praised your name. We have exalted your holy name. We have praised your Lord. We have uh, expressed our love, affection for you, Lord. You that delight in the praises of your people, your children, young and old, great and small. We have magnified your name. We have uh, expressed our intimate love for you. And now, every Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to us, Lord. As we sit at your feet, feed us, O Lord, young, old, great and small. For in the time that we live in, Lord, we need your word. For it is your word that your people, your children, we hide in our hearts. That we may not sin against you. Every Father, it is your word that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. So Holy Spirit, anoint my lips of clay and anoint the hearts of your people. Touch us, O oh Lord. Bless your people, Father. Bless us with your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Saints, there is chaos, confusion in the world today. There are wars and rumors of wars. There are climatic changes. There are heat waves. Now only here across the continental USA, heat waves throughout Europe. The world is on fire. There are storms right here in Kentucky. A couple of days ago, there was floods, storms, killing about over 30 people. In our world today, things there are diseases. There are sicknesses. We've been dealing with COVID for the past, what, two years? And now there is an outbreak, what they call monkeypox, a very infectious disease now sweeping across the United States. Monkeypox. There is the spirit of rebelliousness in our generation today. The spirit of rebelliousness that seems to have found its way into the house of the Lord. The spirit of rebelliousness even in the house of the Lord. Even in the church. Hello somebody. And all these situations, brothers and sisters, all these indications is a reminder, they are reminders of the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. So tonight, God Almighty is going to speak to us. Praise the name of the living God. So we're going to be looking at John 3.16. 
A very familiar portion of scripture. John 3, 16. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, saints, the Holy Scriptures also remind us that salvation is a free gift from God. Praise the name of the living God. Salvation is a free gift of God. Hallelujah. Listen to these things. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. The Apostle Paul speaks of this free gift this way. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Praise the name of the living God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Praise the name of the living God. Salvation is free. It's a free gift from God. Brothers and sisters, God's salvation plan, that is the reconciling of men and women to God by Christ Jesus has puzzled, has amazed peoples of the world from generation to generation. We know this about God. That God is the almighty. We know him to be the omnipotent. We know God to be omnipresent. The highest heavens belong to the Lord. Psalms 115 verse 16. He said the highest heavens belongs to the Lord. But the earth he had given to men. Heaven is his throne. And the earth is his footstool. Isaiah 66 1. We know him, God Almighty, Christ Jesus. As the omniscient God, that is to say, he's all-knowing God. He knows everything. Praise the name of the living God. We know him to be what? Everlasting God. We know him to be what? Eternal God. Praise the name of the living God. We know him to be the creator of all things, whether visible or invisible. And above all, we know God to be what? Complete. We know him to be complete in himself. Praise the name of the living God. Exodus 3.14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. Praise the name of the living God. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God Almighty, he is the I am, the I am. He is complete in himself. Praise the name of the living God. We're going somewhere tonight. Praise the name of the living God. Saints, brothers and sisters, while it is true that God Almighty is complete in himself. However, brothers and sisters, it appears that he is not complete without men. Praise God. Let me say that again. While we know this to be true of God, the I am that I am, that he is complete in himself. However, it appears ever since he made men in his own image and likeness, it appears that he cannot be without or he cannot be complete 
without him. But what happened when Adam disobeyed God? What happened, brothers and sisters? When he disobeyed God's commandment? Do you know, saints, that God could have gotten rid of Adam and Eve for their disobedience? Did you know that? God could have gotten rid of them. And God, listen to this, could have zapped them both on their spot and started over with maybe a new couple. When they disobeyed him, God could have zapped them on their spot. He could have. Oh, brothers and sisters, God Almighty could have waited a while to let them hide behind the fig leaves and live in fear every time they hear a noise in the bushes or in the jungle. Praise God. God, brothers and sisters, could have said, let them pay for what they have done. God could have done all that. But God is so merciful, he did none of these things. Rather, this is what he did by his grace. Listen to this, Genesis 3-9. Listen to this. God did not do any of those things. Now look at what he did. Genesis 3-9. But the Lord Call out the man. Where are you? Where are thou? In the King James Version. Where are you? Brothers and sisters, Adam did not deserve to be found and forgiven. He had rebelled openly and deliberately, intentionally against God. And God's great love. That's all he did. He rebelled intentionally, deliberately, after being forewarned and warned, even of the consequences. The God Almighty went out and said, Where are you? Brothers and sisters, we today may seek. To hide from God. I see you and I and the peoples of the world. We may hide from God. But God's relentless search goes after us. Praise the name of the living God. It's beyond human comprehension, brothers and sisters. We may run and hide, but God's relentless search goes on. Praise the name of the living God. He goes after you and I. When we run and hide, Adam did not deserve to be found and be forgiven. So God's question, God's question told Adam two things. Number one, that you are lost. Adam, where are thou? That question talks of two things. Number one, that Adam, you are lost. Number two, I have come to find you. God. Where are thou, Adam? So that explains or that tells us that Adam, you are lost. But I, the Lord, I have come to find you. Praise the name of the living God. 
Praise the name of the living God. Today, every person needs to know the same two things. That you and I, we are lost without Christ. And Christ came to this world to seek and to save those who are lost. Praise the name of the living God. And so brothers and sisters, and how did he, God Almighty, do this? Hallelujah. How did God do this? For God is a spirit. God came looking for those who are lost. And without Christ, we are lost. But he came looking for those who are lost. How did he do this? We know God is a spirit. Hello, somebody. You and I know that God Almighty manifested himself in the flesh without sin, in the person of Christ Jesus. God is a spirit. Oh, Israel, the Lord our God is one. And God is a spirit. That's what the Bible says. Uh, God is uh, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Praise God. God is a spirit. How did he come? To seek and to find the lost. He manifested himself in the flesh without the sins of men. In the person of Christ Jesus. That's how. Over 2,000 years ago. What was his intent? What was God's intent, brothers and sisters, to manifest himself in the flesh? What was the intent? Hallelujah. To offer up himself at the cross of Calvary. God Almighty himself in the person of Christ Jesus became the perfect lamp of God that takes away the sins of the world. Our opening scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. That is how he came to find the lost. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, this manifestation and demonstration of God's love for men by great Jesus continues to marvel peoples everywhere today. Let me say that again. This manifestation and demonstration of God's love for men, you and I, by Christ Jesus, continues to marvel peoples everywhere. Our forefathers were equally amazed by God's unconditional love. So listen to this. Listen to this. Psalms 8 4. What is man? They ask. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is it, God Almighty? You that is eternal, you that is uh, uh, complete in yourself, that I am that I am. What is it that it appears that you cannot do or live without? This creator that you created in your own image and like it. What is it? What is it? What is it? What are you so mindful of? 
What is man, Lord, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visited him? God Almighty, brothers and sisters, has proven his unconditional love to men from generation to generation. See, so God, brothers and sisters, has proven his unconditional love to men from generation to generation. But tonight, the same loving God wants us, you and I, not to forget that he is also a God of judgment. Praise the name of the living God. While it appears that God Almighty cannot live without men ever since he made men in his own image and likeness, it's part of his unconditional love for you and I. God Almighty tonight wants you and I to know also that he's a God of what? Judgment. Because he's just and righteous. His righteousness, his self-righteousness will judge all unrighteous deeds. Praise the name of the living God. And the Holy Ghost throughout, brothers and sisters, all generations, the Holy Ghost has warned men, peoples, not to take the unconditional love of God for granted. Not to take the unconditional love of God for granted. Praise the name of the living God. The Apostle Peter warns us when he says, by the Holy Ghost, 1 Peter 4, 17. Listen to this. He says, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And it, if it is first, begins at us in the house of the Lord, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Praise the name of the living God. God is love. But tonight, he wants with the spirit of uh, rebelliousness around the world, which is, uh, uh, if not already, finding its way in the house of the Lord. People want to come to church and love God and, and still do their own thing. It's full of rebelliousness. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I say, pray the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, listen to this. He says, and if it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Praise the name of the living God. And so tonight, God Almighty, by the Holy Ghost, want to speak to you and I about the judgment of God. So if I were to title this message, I would say, listen up, child of God. Listen up to the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the living God. Listen up to the Holy Ghost. Listen up. Revelation 2.29. Revelation 2.29 reads, He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Praise the name of the living God. Listen to this. Revelation. He that have an ear, do you? 
You shall let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches today in our generation. Not to take the unconditional love of God for granted. But the Holy Spirit says, Holy Ghost says, if you have an ear, listen to what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell us today in our generation. Pray Jesus wants you and I to listen up to the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, salvation is free. But does the Lord require you and I to responsibly guard against this free gift? Does she? Does God want us to guard? To be responsibly God, this free gift that is given him, you and I. He, and it's impossible, brothers and sisters, that we can lose this wonderful gift from God. Our salvation, can we? Praise the name of the living God. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to you and I tonight. The Apostle Peter said the following concerning our salvation. Listen to this. Second Peter 3.10. 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Praise the name of the Lord. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. If we are complaining about heat waves, we ain't seen nothing yet. What the Bible is describing we ain't seen nothing yet. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the words that are therein shall be burnt up. Praise the name of the living God. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. God wants you and I to listen to what the Holy Ghost, he said, listen up, my son, listen up. My daughter, what the Holy Ghost is telling you today. That God is also a God of what? Judgment. And that we not take grace of God, his unconditional love for granted. Be careful. Be careful. So listen up to the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. Verse 11. 2 Peter 3, 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Mm, dissolved. All these things. Mountains, trees, everything. On the day of the Lord. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. Listen to this. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. Praise God. Bible said without holiness, God is holy. He said, I am holy. And you be holy, my son. You be holy, my daughter. In him, there are no compromises. Without holiness, no one can see God or have a relationship with him. Listen to this. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Praise the name of the living God. Verse 14. Wherefore, the Bible says, Beloved, wherefore, beloved Christian, beloved daughter of the Lord, beloved son of the living God, Wherefore, seeing 
that you look for such things. Be diligent. Praise God. Listen up to what the Holy Ghost is saying to us tonight. Be diligent. Don't take the unconditional love of God for granted. For God wants you and I to understand that he's also a God of our judgment. Say, listen up to the Holy Ghost. Praise the name. Be diligent that ye may be found. Ah, listen to this. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Hallelujah. God is trying to tell you and I. He loves you and I unconditionally. As we said before, when Adam rebelled, intentionally rebelled against God, God could have what? Zapped him right on the spot. But he went looking for him because of his unconditional love. Praise the name of the living God. The God said, listen up, my children, for I'm coming for the people without spot and who are blameless. Verse 17, listen to this. Ye therefore, you and I, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware. He said, beware, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own stubbornness. Praise the name of the living God. Can we lose our salvation? Oh, yes. If we take it for granted. Today, many are not being diligent. Many that have been living here for many years. And I'm not talking about maybe nobody here. I'm talking about the other people in the other churches. All of a sudden, a, a, a brother that is faithful come to church, pay his tithes, is in the ministry. What happens? He's gone. Out doing his own thing. The spirit of rebelliousness have crept into the church. There's no fear of God. And God said, listen up, children. Listen up to the Holy Ghost. For I'm also a God of judgment. Second Peter, the Apostle Peter, warns us again when he says this. Second Peter, one ten. Praise the name of the living God. Wherefore, the rather brethren. Give diligence. Here we go again the same way. Give diligence to make sure, to make your calling and election sure. Be diligent to make sure. I mean, Second Peter one ten. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make sure. Your calling and election sure. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Listen to this. English people, those of you that English is your primary language, listen to the definition of diligence. To be diligent means what? Having or showing care and can conscientiously in one's work or duties. When the Bible said be diligent, he's talking about hard work. Don't take your salvation for granted. Be diligent. God, this free gift from God before it slips away. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. 
Listen to these brothers. Listen up to the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul. I said the Apostle Paul warns men and women who have received this free gift that is salvation this way. Listen to this. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12. Praise the name of the living God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For God is a God of judgment also. The Holy Ghost does not want us to have any misunderstanding. To just talk about the unconditional love of God. He wants us to talk about. Praise the name of the living God. His judgment. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why would the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, use our forefathers to warn us today concerning our salvation or our relationship with God? He that have an ear, listen up to the Holy Ghost. Saints, let's consider the story of Ruth. And how that might help you and I in our relationship with God. How we can become diligent. Root 2.5. Root 2.5. The Bible says, Boaz, as the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is this? Or is that? The former replied, she is the Moabites who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please, this is Ruth, talking to Boaz. She said, please, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and had worked steadily. From morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Praise God. So the story goes on to say that when Ruth gets home, she tells her story to her mother-in-law about the kindness of Boaz. Praise God. Then Naomi tells her this. Ruth 2.22. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with his girls because in someone else failed, you might be harmed. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. The story reminds us, brothers and sisters, that there were some other girls Ladies, maidens on the farm. But who did not see the opportunity that Ruth saw? She's a Moabite woman, not a Jewish. But he, she saw the opportunity to be redeemed by Boaz, the kinsman redeemer. Pray the name of the living God. Boaz. The type and the figure of Christ Jesus, kinsman redeemer. The other girls were probably busy making fun at this strange woman, a foreign woman. Can you see them making fun of her? Oh my goodness, look at her long dress. Oh my goodness, look at her dry face. No makeup. She surely is strange. Can you see those girls making fun of this mobite woman? Oh, she talks funny. 
Can you see them making fun of her? They did not see the opportunity. The Boaz, his redeemer, provides. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. The root knew exactly what she wanted. Do you know what you want? Do you know where you're going? She told Naomi, your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Pray the name of the living God. There's a saying, brothers and sisters, that you don't know what you have got until it is gone. Let me say that again. There's a popular saying that you don't know what you've got until it is gone. Praise the name of the living God. I say praise the name of the living God. Listen to this. Root 3, 7. When Boaz had finished eating and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the green pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Now listen to this. When Boaz woke up and discovered a woman lying at his feet, verse 9, who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth. She said, spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a kinsman redeemer. So Boaz was a kinsman redeemer, a type and a figure of Christ Jesus. Ruth saw the potential. I'm not a Jewish person, but I see the opportunity. I want to be redeemed. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, Ruth waited at the feet of the kinsman redeemer. Praise the name of the living God. Mary, in the New Testament, waited at the feet of Jesus while her sister Martha was all distracted by the cares of the world. Praise the name of the living God. Ruth saw the opportunity waited at the feet of Boaz Mary saw the blessing of staying at the feet of Jesus praise the name of the living God the other girls were busy with the cares of this life Ruth saw an opportunity praise the name of the living God and in the end she was redeemed. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Listen up. Sings to the Holy Ghost. What God is telling us tonight. I want to end with a story that Jesus told. The parable of the ten virgins who waited on the bridegroom. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, the ten virgins are a type and a figure of the church today. And Jesus used this parable to send you and I a powerful message concerning our free gift. How we can lose it. Praise God. Who were they waiting on? Who were they waiting on? The bridegroom. Did they know the time or hour that he would appear? No, they did not. Who are we? God's people. Waiting on? Who are we waiting on today? And do we know when he would appear? Listen up to the Holy Ghost. Diligent. Diligent. Do we know when he will return? The answer is no. 
Nobody knows. The Bible says not even angels know when Christ Jesus will return. Just like in the parable. The ten virgins did not know. This is the story told by Jesus himself concerning his return. Listen up. You are the Holy Ghost. He's telling you and I tonight that suddenly, according to the Bible, the bridegroom appeared and five were ready to go with him and five were not. Praise God. Praise God. Listen up, brothers and sisters, to what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you and I today concerning this free gift that we have received from God Almighty. He said, be diligent. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Do not be at the five virgins. And rather to be at the five. The five who were busy with the cares of life. The five who will not pray. Hello, somebody. We're talking about ten virgins waiting on the bridegroom. The ten virgins, brothers and sisters, is a type and a figure of the church of God of today. We are waiting on the bridegroom and his name is Jesus. Listen up. But the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you and I. They were coming to church. They were paying their tithes and offering. The five virgins, they were not praying. Praise the name of the living God. The five would not read the Bible. During the time they came to church, to hear the word was when they came to church. The five who will find every excuse not to go to church. The five who complain about everything in the church. Always pointing their fingers at somebody else and say to their own selves. The five virgins. Brothers and sisters, God is saying that whoever that has an ear. Let him tonight listen to the warning that is given to you and I. Of all that is going on in the world today, if there was ever a time that God's people became wise like the five virgins who were ready when Jesus, the bridegroom appeared, he wants you and I to be diligent. The Holy Ghost wants you and I to take our walk of God so serious. But nobody knows when he's going to come. Praise the name of the living God. To the end, brothers and sisters, the writer of the book of Hebrews, as I come to a close, the book of Hebrews puts it this way. Hebrews 2.1. Hebrews, Hebrews 2, 1. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed, attention to the things we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. If we should let them slip, why, brothers and sisters? Verse 2 tells us why. Listen to this. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, then, listen to this, Hebrews 2, 3, how shall we, you and I, saints of God, apostolics, feel the Holy Ghost? Listen to this. Listen up to the Holy Ghost. Listen up. 
How shall we, apostolic, escape if we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Pray the name of the living God. How can we escape the judgment of God if we allow this free gift to slip away by not doing things that we are called to do, to pray without ceasing, to have a prayer life, a personal relationship with God. That means prayer at all times. Meditating on the word of God. Just like, have you seen a brother and a sister fellowshipping? The excitement. I always like to talk to them. Oh, they can't wait. The excitement. The smiles. Can't wait to talk to you. Do we have the same intensity? Hello, somebody. Be diligent. Be steadfast. Listen up. To the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the five virgins could not make it. If Christ were to appear in his glory this moment, would you be one of the five that made it? Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is telling us tonight. Let's examine our hearts, brothers and sisters, tonight. And let's come to the altar and thank God for the gift of salvation. And number two, let's cry out to him to help us with our relationship with him. Hallelujah. I've been talking to the Lord in prayer and in. I've been telling the Lord that I think that the greatest threat to our relationship to God is not the devil. The greatest threat to this free gift is not the devil. The greatest threat to our salvation is our own neglect to do the things that God has put in place for us to do to stay closer to him. Prayer, the word of God. Fasting, thing that we hear all the time. Praise the name. Visitor friend, you are our honorable guest. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this message is also for you. Don't get caught up with the things of the world. God's love is amazing beyond human comprehension. And if you are here tonight, I don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> I don't believe in that. Coincidence. But I know who is in control. Visit a friend if you are here tonight. Because the Holy Ghost led you here to the sanctuary. But God is searching for you. His relentless search I brought you here tonight. Why don't you come to the altar and we'll pray with you. And we'll pray with you. Saints, stand up in the name of the Lord. Let's come to the altar and cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word. Yes, you are a God of love. 
But you want us also to remember, God Almighty, that you are the God of judgment. Today, Heavenly Father, the spirit of rebelliousness that led to the judgment on the peoples in the days of Noah. The spirit of rebelliousness that led you, Father, to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. It appears, Lord, that the spirit is now working in the sons and daughters of men. It appears, God Almighty, that the spirit is finding its way to the house of the Lord. The Holy Ghost, thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Thank you for your word of warning, admonition to your people. And you do this because you love us. We bless your wonderful name, O Lord. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. God bless you, saints. And uh, if you haven't paid your tithes and offering, don't forget. To pay your tithes and offering. Praise the name of the living God. We can never, never outgive the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Until the next time we meet here again Sunday, our Spanish service begins 10 o'clock. And the English service begins 12 o'clock for prayer. 1230 for the main service. So with the help of the Lord, we see you. God bless you. We love you all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.